Welcome to Chaotic Recap. I'm Tiana, and I play Andraste Neallo. This is the recap for Chaos Agents Episode 4, Factions. We join the Foxy Irregulars having just finished picking out furniture while they continue to play Tavern Simulator. Next up is buying plants at Corellian's Crown across the street. Remy gets a fiddle leaf fig and orchids, while Uzo wants his study completely filled with the maiden hair ferns that Baga has taken a liking to. He also gets his potion identified. It's an elixir of health that can cure diseases, but not his blindness. He'll need to find a cleric for that. Remy asks if the potion would cure lycanthropy, but there's no reason he should need that since he shook off the were-rat bite. He flirts with the owner, Fala, then realizes he can't tell what, if any, gender the elf is. Heading back to the tavern, they see a huge wagon out front. Remy immediately tries to hide and fails. Luckily, it's Broxley with samples from the Vintners and Brewers Guild. It's obvious that being in the Guild of Innkeepers is benefiting them. After spending far too much time enjoying alcohol, they select mead, wines, and the Great Stout, which no one else in the North Ward has. They also select Pete's Pilsner, although Remy says he doesn't like the name Peter. Uzo and Ruckus don't care, but go along with Baga, who likes the stout. It's getting late in the afternoon of a long day and the inn still doesn't have a roof. So the Irregulars tell Leif, the ghost, all about the choices they've made before taking a carriage across town to the Yawning Portal. Remy returns his to-go tankard to Durnham and asks about hiring minstrels and variety acts. Durnham points out the minstrel three strings, and Ruckus suggests Andraste should buy him a beer. Ruckus can't do it because he doesn't do finances, or maybe count. Three Strings is interested in the idea, and he eventually agrees to play at the Irregulars Tavern for a cut of the night's profit. He also recommends another minstrel who plays a straight saxophone. His name is Kenny Jeeves and moonlights as a bartender. Uzo looks for anyone in the Yawning Portal who might be a harper. When he finds one, he berates the man for not doing more to help the poor in the city. The man says that if Uzo wants to join the harpers, he has a job. Uzo must find a talking mare named Maxine, who pulls one of the double-decker carriages called Dre's. Maxine has information that might help with the gang war in the streets. Remy talks to Yagra, the half-orc Zentarum they previously saved. She's cagey with giving out information, even when Remy introduces Andraste, Uzo, and his Rottweiler, Ruckus. Yagra does introduce them to Davil Starsong, who explains much of what's happening. Davil says there is an offshoot of the Zentarum in the city that is causing the havoc. They stole the Stone of Galore from the Xanathar, who, not realizing there were two groups, attacked the Zentarum in revenge. He makes it clear that the original Zentarum want no conflict, and also that there are two artifacts in play. One is the Stone of Galore, and the other is the Staff of Dragons, which keeps dragons, the flying kind, not the coin, out of the city. It is usually held by the Waterdeep Blackstaff, the head of the Wizards Guild. He doesn't know anything about the were-rats. Remy likes the idea of keeping this staff out of the gangs' hands. Ruckus likes the idea of killing people and finding gold. Davo also offers the Irregulars a job. Someone has been killing elves and half-elves in the Dock Ward. He'll give them a hundred gold to capture the killer, fifty gold to kill him, plus a reputation boost with the Zentarum. Ruckus tries to make a blood oath, but Andraste stops him from cutting his hand again. The team makes plans to head to the Mule Skull Tavern in the Dock Ward, where one of the murdered elves was found. They will go separately, so they don't look like a group, and use Andraste as bait. First, Andraste convinces Remy to clean up, since he's still covered in blood, and he changes his rip jacket to one not nearly as fancy. Andraste and Ruckus also realize they're exhausted from the long day and no rest. At the Mule Skull Tavern, the clientele is mostly sailors and dock workers. The barkeep swindles Remy for an expensive pint of Pete's Pilsner. He tries to make friends with a local who knows nothing about the murders. Ruckus watches his arch nemesis, the door. No gang members show up, and all in all, they make a lot of careful plans for nothing. They leave the bar separately the way they came in, and Ruckus fails every attempt at being stealthy clanking and stumbling between shadows, knocking over barrels, and falling into a bedpan. 
He says the piss smell is an aesthetic choice. Back at the yawning portal, they head to their rooms, but Remy stays to talk with Durnham, still learning nothing useful. He finally climbs into Uzo's bed and curls up between his legs, but not before trying to peek under the bandages over Uzo's eyes. Baga bites him. Remy asks if Baga is poisonous, but Uzo says Baga is the one who should get checked out after biting Remy. Remy agrees that's the more likely situation, and Uzo says that Remy is like that kid at sleepaway camp who never shuts up while the others are trying to sleep. During the middle of the night, Remy wakes up, feeling something amiss. His hands are elongated and covered in fur. He feels a snout on his face. Then he wakes up, sweating all over Uzo, realizing it was a dream. He goes back to sleep, and the Irregulars, finally, after the longest day ever, get a long rest. When Andraste wakes up, her window is open, and there's a small white kitty. It asks Andraste if she wants to join the Emerald Enclave, and if so, she should visit them at the horribly spelled Falcon Mirror. The cat runs away. The team meets downstairs for breakfast after an uneventful night, save for Remy's snake bite. Andraste says they need to be less secretive with each other and tells them about the cat. Remy explains that the Emerald Enclave is a group that believes in the balance of nature and protects it. Then he flirts with Andraste again. Uzo tells them about the Harpers and his mission to find the talking horse. They decide to go back to the City Watch precinct and ask Sergeant Staggart about the killings they're investigating. While Uzo calls him by increasingly high-ranking titles, he explains what he knows. The first killing was five days ago, and there have been two more since. All of them were elves or half-elves, and they were found decapitated with their heads next to their bodies. They were killed, however, by something that went in through their chests and out their backs with a larger exit wound. Ruckus very specifically asks if it was a knife cannon. The victims were commoners, not fighters, and the killings were probably racially motivated. Staggart offers a reward of 25 gold each if they can stop the killings. When Uzo asks him what rat tails are worth, he says nothing. Where rat tails, however, he will pay them for. Remy instinctively looks for a tail. The Irregulars head to the South Ward to visit the Emerald Enclave at the still confusingly spelled Falcon Mare. Nearby, they see a huge dilapidated building with two large towers surrounded by a magical force field. Something about it is out of balance, but they decide to visit the Enclave first and investigate later. And that's it for the recap of Chaos Agents Episode 4, Factions. Join us live Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash quests and chaos. And until we meet again, may the light of Lyra shine upon you.